Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another Community Connections with Ryan Sauer. Super excited today to have my friend, Elizabeth Dyson. She is the owner of the boutique firm Shiny Inc. and a friend of mine on the Community Connections show. Elizabeth, how are you today, my friend? I'm good, you know, considering we're still in COVID. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you and I always have uh, real talks. So we're, we're doing it through Zoom today. But uh, what, what have you been seeing? You know, we're going to come back to COVID in a second because, you know, I think I told you this show spawned from some Facebook lives I did from COVID and now 40 episodes later, <laughs> it's, it's, it's its own entity. But tell me a little bit because you've got a unique background um, about, you, you know, your background and, and, you know, an overview for our audience listening today of, you know, what you've, what you've done in the past over you and what you do now. Well, I guess I'm living proof that you can make a living with a liberal arts major. Um, <laughs> so I not only have one useless degree, according to some people, I have two because I double degreed in English and history. Um, but I um, have spent probably 30 years um, I started when I was a very, very small. Yeah, we were five. Um, yeah, we were five. Yeah, we were, five, we yeah. were child prodigies. That's right. That we were. Yeah. Um, but I started out um, on the cable in the cable industry, working with marketing um, and uh, PR. Um, I've held positions at um, Disney, ABC, Time Warner, Comcast, um, AT and T, uh, a bunch of other companies, um, and then. Um, with my last corporate job in 2009, when I was released out into the wild, um, <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm just tired of doing the corporate thing. I'm just going to go off and start my own business. And so um, I started a small boutique PR firm called, um, called Shiny PR, uh, Shiny Inc., and we are a boutique um, PR company um, that we um, handle small companies, um, giving them the attention that they wouldn't get at a larger agency where they would be um, probably managed by some junior account executive off the side of their desk. Um, and there are clients that have unique um, needs um, and do unique things. And um, I've been doing that since 2009. Well, you know, uh, you're, you're living proof, and I can attest to people, you put in so much time for your clients, um, you know, doing great work and meticulously working on their stuff and making sure they get the best exposure possible. So, and you work in a lot of different sectors, so. Um, yeah, I, I do with some NPO work. Um, I do um, authors. Um, I do some, um, some technology companies that do everything from virtual training for nuclear plants to um, cybersecurity um, 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 software for government agencies. So it's kind of spread across there. But, you know, no matter how diverse your, your company is, you have basic PR needs. Um, and they're kind of handled the same way. So, um, and I enjoy the, the diversity of, of the clients. Well, that's amazing. And then you've, uh, I know you have launched uh, a very successful magazine. Is that Our, Ta Our Town to Cow magazine? Yes, you probably have heard I, of Our Town to Cow. It looks, it looks so like a, a magazine that you're, that you're familiar with. I am. Well, I'm, um, I'm very proud of that. You should launched, be too. We launched it in September of last year as a bi-monthly publication. Um, it um, covers North DeKalb, which is primarily Tucker, Stone, um, Tucker Smoke Rise, um, Embry Hills, and North Lake. Um, we mail about 10,000 copies, um, and we did launch as a bi-monthly, um, but in July, the issue we're working on right now, we are launching monthly, which is okay. kind of frightening. Well, you know, it's... Um... You know, the thing about you, Elizabeth, you, you work so hard and you put the community first and you do it the right way. Um, you know, you and I've known each other a long time. There's no shortcuts. Like you said, you started your own business right after the, the economic you know, crisis of 2008. You know, I was much, much the same starting over. So I guess you get to a certain age and there's nothing a whole lot that surprises you. So, um, but no, I mean, it is, um, but tell us for our listeners, I mean, you know, that whole area you're talking about, the Tucker and the Embry Hills and the Smoke Rise, I mean, especially the Tucker are just booming uh, with so much, and, and, and you're covering the positive community events out there. Um, and, you know, we're in an age where people are saying things are going backwards or printing magazines are going backwards. With you, I've seen the opposite. People are flocking to it. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Especially now, my God, they want good news, right? <laughs> they want positive news. Yeah, that touches on a couple of, of points in my strategic plan when I was putting this together last year and I was talking to you. Um, it's true that print is maybe going downhill a bit with the larger publications, um, but people still are interested in knowing what's going on in their neighborhood, in their community, um, because they can read the AJC or the, the New York Times or the Washington Post and they get a, an idea of, of like national news, global news, but they don't know what's going on down the street in the shopping mall that is empty. And is, is any business gonna move in there anytime soon? Um, they don't know what their local city council's doing. Um, they don't know what um, civic organizations are going on or what street fairs are going on. Um, so I was really, really in, determined to get a publication together that would give people an idea of what was going on in their neighborhoods and their communities and give them a forum that they could talk about things that were going on in their community. And also we have shied away from doing, you know, hard news, um, because you can get all of the hard news <laughs> from any of the other publications or turning on the TV. But I wanted to make a publication that was like a respite, um, was kind of a refuge from all of the um, scurrying that was going around and all of the negativity. Um, so we, like the, for instance, the uh, May, June issue that we that we put out um, focused on a race car driver that's right in our neighborhood. Oh, um, wow. Who knew? Um, and so we are, we're covering positive news, um, but we're doing it in a way that it's not a fluff publication. I mean, it, yeah. these are professionally written because that's what my degrees were in. Yeah. Um, yep. And we're, you know, we're going to the sources, um, we're putting it together in a very, very professional manner. And um, we also were very careful in designing the magazine in that um, some, some of my friends have lovingly called it a bathroom read um, because <laughs> You know, we've, we're very careful in making sure that all of the articles in there are like, you know, short articles, five minutes or less to read, because it's a publication that's meant to not sit down and read it from cover to cover, although we, we encourage people to do that <laughs> right, if they want, right. but it's a magazine that you can pick up and, and digest one article and enjoy and then put it down and then come back later. Um, the only um, difference in that is that the cover article is usually between 750 and 1,000 words, but everything else is 500 words or less. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's an easily digestible piece. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it's funny, um, uh, you know, and, and this show's not about that, but it's somebody that does definitely understand the, uh, what it takes to do this stuff. Um, you know, it has been, you know, watching people go through in, in communities and people you know, especially during the last few months, um, what we're doing is important, getting that news out. And exactly, there's a difference in just fluff, positive stuff, but having real content. And where I continue to see print and its related products grow is these niche, niche, niche things. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, a national magazine, you know, you can digest it in five seconds online, you know, before it ever gets to the news shelf. But this gives you the opportunity to, you know, not only get it in your mailbox, you know, that you do, but to pick it up, you know, beyond COVID, it was a little bit, bit, little bit tricky the last couple of months. But, you know, as things open back up, they can go pick it up at a destination place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, it, it is just a very well-written publication. The, uh, before I forget, give our listeners and our audience the link, I mean, the URL to both your shiny and to the Art Tom DeKalb. Well, to the agency, it's um, shinycom.com, S-H-I-N-Y-C-O-M-M.com, -M okay. short for Shiny Communications. Okay. Um, for the magazine, it's ourtowntocab.com, okay. and we have online versions of all the issues on there. So you can, if you somehow miss it in your mailbox, or you, you don't pick it up, or you just want to look at a back issue, um, you can go online and actually read the full magazine on the, on the web. Well, and Elizabeth, I know you're very active in the community with Rotary and things you do. I mean, it's, um, I guess you've been doing a lot of Zooms. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I've got, th I have, I had three of them this week, uh, this one. So, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's funny. I, I had done a lot of webinars in my day, whatever, but Zoom was just something I had not personally used. And so, mm -hmm. in a column, in my column I wrote this month, I said, uh, anybody that doesn't know Zoom, 
uh, wishes they sure had bought stock in it about eight months ago or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but tell us a little bit about what you've seen in the community, because this is a community connection show. You have a community magazine. What have you seen? What are words of encouragement you've seen of businesses that have uh, reinvented themselves overnight, you know, thinking about, hey, I'm a restaurant. I'm not even set up for carry out or take out. Well, any stories like that that come to mind or people that you've been, man, that's, that's amazing to see the resilience of a business owner. Well, the restaurants are, are clearly the most obvious choice because um, they had to make really quick decisions about salvaging what business they could. So the majority of them, you know, they didn't, maybe they didn't keep 100% of their, of their revenues, but they recouped a lot of them um, by going to takeout and to delivery. Um, but then there have been some unique opportunities, um, like um, one of my advertisers, Thread, uh, which is a beauty salon in the, in the area. They do mostly eyebrows, waxing, eyebrows, hair. Um, they, of course, had to shut down immediately because you know, beauty salons was, was considered a non-essential business, a decision obviously made by men. Um, <laughs> and um, boy, that was sexist, wasn't uh, it? That's all right. You, you know I'm my sure household. We'll, we'll welcome your calls and, and letters. That's right. <laughs> Letter to the editor. But, um, but she was trying to protect her business, keep her clients, you know, in touch. And then also she was concerned about her staff who were, you know, going without any money. So she repurposed her salon as a mask factory. Oh. Um, she brought in all of her employees that, that wanted to continue to work. And, um, and um, they started making masks. Um, How about that? A really nice mask. And um, they um, were selling them for, um, you know, a minimum amount compared to what you go on eBay, but they were really well made. And they came in a variety of colors and, and patterns. And plus also she tied into a nonprofit here in the, based in the Tucker area that for every mask that somebody bought, they would then donate one to um, the medical workers association so that they could keep um, them supplied with masks as you know they were going through all kinds of shortages so i i think that that was um a quick repurpose mm -hmm. um definitely a, a a business woman who was very um, nimble on her feet and then also she turned um a a definite challenge in her business plan um to a benefit for the community you know, it's funny, you, you got me thinking of something. There was a, a package store that had opened uh, in my neck of the woods. I'd never even heard of it before, but obviously, you know, they were still open. But what they did is they quickly pivoted and started making hand sanitizer. Yeah, I've read about some of the whiskey companies that, yeah. that did that. They went to their, you know, the, and so they, which is cool. I told my wife, these places, um, you know, where hand sanitizer traditionally is 40, 50 percent, whatever. They mm -hmm. were making an 80 percent alcohol because, you know, yep. and it was. And so <laughs> what they said is if you come in and make a purchase at our store, we give you a free thing, a hand sanitizer. And you couldn't get the hand sanitizer. If you remember what I'm talking, it was it was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. So yeah. immediately they they changed their business model by saying we need it. We have it. It's stronger than you could even get if you could get it. People became familiar with their operation in the early days, you know, and then they started going back. So, you know, I, I think, you know, you and I are old enough to experience enough uh, to see, uh, you know, great minds, you know, come up with things and ultimately make you stronger uh, for it. Uh, and I've also seen businesses close their doors, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately. And it, it's, uh, it's tough. And sometimes it was to no fault of their own. I mean, they just... Mm -hmm. They couldn't change fast enough. And uh, I've seen some restaurants that I know that I, I'm, I'm surprised by, but in, you know, it's, um, it's tough. And, you know, when you put your whole, you know, as you and I know, we're entrepreneurs, when you put all the stuff out there. And so, um, but let me ask you a couple other questions and then we'll, we'll kind of shut it down. But what is, uh, what is a favorite part of your job? I mean, between PR and the magazine, what do you enjoy the most that you get to do? Um. I like to build the relationships. I mean, I, I really count my advertisers as not just people, you know, customers that, you know, give me a check every month. Um, I mean, I really have gotten to know a lot of the local businesses and, and advertisers in the area um, so that when I drop by, um, which I like to do, which I haven't been able to do a whole lot right, until right. recently, 
um, you know, we, we can chat about common things. Um, and I, and I call them up and it's not just, you know, I'm, I'm making the rounds of calls this week for the July issue and it is not just you know are you going to advertise again blah 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 it's like oh you know how's your cat i know that you had to take him to the vet because he got into something is he doing okay and i mean it's sincere conversations and they're the same way with me they they ask questions about oh you know i heard your daughter's going off to university of cincinnati you know are they going to open the campus what's that like and i mean we have real conversations because we have a real relationship and i think that that's been the strength of the success the magazine um, because you know when when COVID really hit hard and everybody was like working from home and closing their doors and having to reassess their business I didn't have one advertiser that I felt like wasn't going to try to stay in the May June issue and if they couldn't wouldn't be back in July um, because they believe in the publication, but more importantly, there is like a business bond there. I mean, they're, they're supporting another local business um, in me because I'm based right here in Tucker and um, I'm supporting them. And so I guess the part of my, my job circling back to answering your question that the, the best part about job is, is the socialization, the getting to know people. And that's what I've missed a lot during this COVID yeah. crisis is um, not being able to just pop into somebody's door and, you know, check in with them. So, but you know, things are coming back like that now. I mean, I'm they wearing are. my mask um, and doing the six foot distancing, but I am getting back out there and being able to visit clients face to face, which I like. Well, that's great. And you are a great relationship builder and, you know, you and I have that kind of relationship, but yeah, you know, I tell you, it's been, you know, just from having, you know, similar things, seeing other businesses continue to uh, walk, you know, you can't, we couldn't walk arm in arm, but walk shoulder to shoulder with you and, you know, you're shoulder to shoulder with them. I've seen some of the best stuff because my, my initial thought is everybody's just going to bail on everybody else and say, you know, every man for themselves. And it's been the exact opposite. Yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, in my core, I never thought that would happen, but as the panic started to rise, I'm like, oh man. And then I started seeing after a few weeks, people were like, you know, there's some people have been hit to no fault of their own due to, you know, contracts or unions, things they were belong to that they, they can't open back up. And, you know, it, it's tough to watch, but for most people, most of us, we wanted to get back to work. And mm -hmm. I've told people on this show, this is different than even, you know, 2008, 9-11, because um, yeah, after 9-11, we were like, we're going back to work. We're going to go fly an airplane again. And when you're telling you can't do your job, uh, that was hard for, for me and you. But, but we've been resilient, you know, not only mm -hmm. uh, locally, but as Americans. And uh, I, I'm, prou I'm really proud. I'm really proud of what we're doing. And I'm proud of you. Uh, it's come to the end here of of, of putting out a, such a quality publication that uh, unites people and brings people together. Uh, we need that now, now more than ever. And uh, I also, uh, you know, when I, we do our next Starbucks, uh, I'll be there uh, on your shoulder as you, as you go monthly. But monthly is what it is, and, and it's just sharing that positive uh, community news. And uh, I'm just really proud of uh, all you're doing. And if and, and as you if you haven't seen it, go to ourtownedecab.com or uh, would you say shiny, shiny with a Y, C-O-M-M dot com, correct? Right. If you All need right. some PR work. Yes, yeah, you need some PR work, and you are a phenomenal writer, and you got photography skills. You got all kinds of skills. Uh, all I can do is talk. <laughs> <laughs> Which just is kidding. important. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But no, you do a really good job. And, you know, for PR work or whatever, um, I give you my highest in endorsement. And I'm glad you could, uh, if I could finally get you on the show. So I uh, appreciate you coming on. Elizabeth Dyson is a guest on the Community Connection Show. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. And thanks for the opportunity and look forward to seeing you soon. Yes, ma'am, we will. I'm going to shut us down now. Uh, folks, we're going to listen to the Community Connections with Ryan Hi. Sowers, special guest, Elizabeth Dyson, and we will see you next time. Bye.